Hi all, welcome to my lecture series on wireless networks. In my previous video, I was discussing about IEEE 802.11 system architecture, protocol architecture. In this video, I'll be discussing about the physical layer, the MAC layer, and in my forthcoming videos, I'll be explaining about 802.11b, 11a, and so on. So let's get started. IEEE 802.11 supports three different physical layers. One layer is based on infrared technology and the remaining two layers is based on radio transmission. So the physical layer offers us access point with one or two megabits per second transfer rate. So the two layers, uh, uh, that is the two versions of the physical layer, frequency hopping split spectrum, direct sequence split spectrum has been utilized by radio transmission. And last, of course, your infrared. Talking about the frequency hopping split spectrum, it is a method of transmitting radio signals by rapidly switching a carrier among many frequency channels using a pseudo-random sequencer known both to the transmitter and receiver. The data signal is modulated with a narrowband carrier signal that hops in a random but predictable sequence from frequency to frequency as a function of time over a wide band of frequencies. It is used as a multiple axis method in the frequency hopping code division multiple axis scheme. To show the diagram, here after giving our input, it is going to the encoder for the encoding of signals and uh, your, your pseudo noise generator, it generates a code, it has been modulated and given over the channel. And coming over to the receiver, uh, pseudo noise generator is again giving the spreading code and again demodulation happens, thereby you will be giving your output data. So this is what is uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum. You are going to spread the signal with the help of the code. What are the uses of this frequencies hopping uh, split spectrum? They are using in military purposes. Then your Bluetooth also works in this purpose. Your walkie-talkies and other radios. All these are utilizing this FSHS principle. Uh, slide shows you the format of a night to plate not 2.11 physical layer frame using FHSS. So the first thing, uh, the in the frame format, the first tab is your synchronization. It is uh, used for synchronization of potential receivers and signal detection by your CCA. Second is a start of start frame delimiter. It is used to indicate the beginning of the frame. And next one, PLW. It is nothing but the PLCPPDU length word. It indicates the length of the payload. And fourth one, it is a PLCP signaling feed. PSF. It indicates the data rate of the payload. Then uh, HEC header error check. It gives you uh, the uh, check some values for security purposes. And your second technology is your direct sequence spread spectrum technology. Data signal is multiplied by a spreading code and the resulting signal occupies a much higher frequency band. A spreading code is a pseudo random sequence. So here what you are going to do, you are going to uh, your data plus a spreading code will be added and information has been spreaded for security purposes. So the figure shows the format of an IEEE 802.11 physical frame using DSSS. So it is similar to the previous one, previous uh, what we saw the frame format of uh, FHSS, right? So synchronization obviously it is used not only for synchronization but also gain setting, energy reduction and frequency offset compensation. And next one, it is the same to the previous field, SFT, start frame delimiter, it is going to tell you the beginning of the frame. Then signal feed, it is uh, uh, different from the previous one. Here the signal, it indicates the data rate of the payload. Okay, So if a value is given like the 0x0a, it indicates 1 megabits per second. Okay, And thus it is going to operate in this uh, uh, BPSK method, differential BPSK method. And if it is 0x14, it indicates 2 megabits per second. The data rate is 2 megabits per second. And thus, it is going to use differential QRH phase shift key method. And next service, this is also new. It is a field which is reserved for future use. And next, obviously, length. It is a 16-bit field which is used for indicating the length of the payload. And the same header error check. The signal, service, and length feeds are protected by this checksum. So that is all for the two, two FHSSS and DSSS. Now we'll go for our medium access layer control layer, that is the MAC layer. Uh, MAC layer, as I already discussed, it is used for supporting uh, roaming authentication and power conservation mechanisms. Uh, the services provided by MAC layers are, it provides two types of services. One is asynchronous data service and second one is an optional time-bounded service. 
while uh, 802.11 it offers an asynchronous service in ad hoc network mode and it offers both the type of service both asynchronous data service and time bound and service in the infrastructure mode okay i'll repeat once again your mac layer it is not only supporting roaming authentication power service power conservation it is also providing two types of services one is a data service and time bounded service so if you are operating in ad hoc mode it is going to give you asynchronous service and if you are going to operate in infrastructure mode it is going to provide you both the asynchronous data service as well as time bounded service so the following are the three basic mechanisms that has been defined for IEEE 802.11. The first mechanism is a mandatory basic method based on the version of carrier sense multiple axis collision avoidance. Then an optional method avoiding the hidden terminal problem. So the first two methods it is going to utilize only your distributed coordination function. And the third one a contention free polling method for time bounded service is going to use your point coordination function. Okay, so we are, we will see the three mechanisms in detail now. Uh, before I could go in detail, I just want to discuss some certain uh, interframe spacing. Okay, so what do you mean by interframe spacing? So there is going to be a space between the frames. That is what is called as IFS. Interframe spacing is nothing but if two frames are there, a uh, spacing is going to be maintained between that. That I call it as interframe spacing. In our right to play not 2.11, it has three types of frames. Okay, SIFS short interframe space PIFS the PCF interframe space DIFS the DCF interframe spacing okay now what is short interframe spacing so the, the word is telling you short right so the shortest waiting time for me for accessing the medium that waiting time for accessing the medium you're going to wait for only for a short time that time we call it as short interframe space so what is it actually for how for, for for which time now you are going to wait for a shorter time. For receiving acknowledgements, you will wait for a short time. And for all the polling responses, you will wait for a short time. So that time I call it as, for you are waiting for acknowledgement, isn't it? So that time I call it as, that waiting time I call it as short interframe space. So interframe spacing. Then you are waiting for the polling responses, right? So that time I call it as SIFS. Okay. Next, uh, PC. Uh, next, we'll move over here. DCF. See the longest waiting time to access the channel. That longest waiting time I call it as DIFS, DCEF interframe spacing. Okay, now the waiting time between your DIFS and SIFS, that waiting time I call it as PCIFS. Okay, clear with the frame spacing? So uh, I repeat it once again. There are three types of interframe spacing. Uh, what do you mean by the interframe spacing? Between two frames, you're just going to wait for some time. That time, I call it as interframe spacing. It is divided into three types. One is SIFS, PIFS, DIFS. So for accessing the medium, you will wait only for a short time. That time, I call it as short interframe spacing. Example, you are waiting for getting acknowledgement. You are waiting for getting polling responses. Second one, you are waiting to get, uh, you are waiting for a longer time to access the channel. That longer waiting time, I call it as DCF interframe spacing. The gaps between these two interframe spacings, the waiting time between DIFS and SIFS is called as PCF interframe spacing or PIFS spacing. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the basic. We discussed three mechanisms. In the three mechanisms, I'm going to discuss you the first mechanism that is the basic, basic DFW MAC using CSMA bar CA. So here the mandatory access mechanisms of IEEE 802.11 is based on a carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance, which is a random access scheme with carrier sense and collision avoidance through random backoff. As see the figure shown here, if the medium is idle, if the medium is idle uh, for a least duration, uh, for at least DIFS, a node can access the medium at once. This allows for short access delay under light load. But as more and more nodes try to access the medium, additional mechanisms are needed. Right. So if it is free, you can access the channel. Okay. So if many, many uh, stations are waiting, then what you will have to do? You should give more, more chances. Now, so that is first again, right? If the medium is busy, nodes will have to wait for a duration of DIFS. It will have to wait entering a contention phase afterwards. Each node now chooses a random back of time within the contention window, and the delays medium access for this random amount of time. 
the node then continues to access the node what will the node do it will continuously access the channel it will be sensing whether it is free or not as soon as the node senses the channel is busy it has lost its cycle and has to wait for the next chance until the medium is idle again uh, at least for some minute we call it as the waiting time we call it as dif as i already told you what is dif is you going to wait for a long time to access the channel so it will wait for some dif is but if the randomized additional waiting time is still not over what will you do the additional waiting time is measured in multiples of above time slots this additional randomly distributed delay helps to avoid collisions otherwise all the sessions will try to transfer data after waiting for the medium becoming idle again so obviously uh, this mechanism is not uh, what to tell it is not fair right independent of all the overall time a node has already waited a transmission time each node has to uh, same chances for transmitting data in the next cycle so to provide fairness what they are doing they have added a back of timer each node selects a random waiting time within the range of contention window if a certain station does not get access to the medium in the first cycle it stops its back of timer waits for a channel to be idle again for difs and starts the counter again so as soon as the counter expires the node accesses the medium uh, this means that the default stations do not choose a randomized back of time again but continue to count down stations have waited longer than the advantage over stations that have just entered so uh, this again proves to be some uh, that because if this medium is not free they have to continuously sense they have to continually on their timer and they have to look off look off their or back of times now so this is not been proved as a good effective technique so what have they done is they are moving forward for a a, a technique which utilizes uh, uh, it is just checking whether we have uh, it is free or not okay so here here this diagram it explains the basic access mechanism of a i2 plate not 2.11 for five stations look at five stations are trying to access the medium okay so now station 3 has a first request from the higher layer to send a packet uh, the station senses the medium it is sensing the medium whether it is free or not so if uh, when it is sensing the medium what is it going to do it is going to wait for some time called as difs okay so station 3 is ready first ready okay well it is waiting for some time a difs and access the medium then station 1 station 2 and station 5 station 1 station 2 and station 5 right have at least uh, have to wait at least until the medium is uh, again idle after station 3 has stopped transmitting its signals right now so now all the three stations choose a back of time within the contention window and start counting down their back of timers okay so station 3 is going to transfer data if he is busy what will happens the other stations will be uh, in an idle time they will set off the back of timer and they will be idle right they will be waiting until the back of timer overs now now what happens uh, 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 after some, the round of back back of time of station 1 as back uh, some of boe and bor the same is shown for station 5 Session two has a total back of time of only BOE and gets access to the medium first. No residual back of timer for station two is shown. The back of timers of station one and station five stop, and the stations store their residual back of times. While a new station has to choose its back of time from the whole contention window, the two old stations have statistically smaller back of values. The older values are on average lower than the new ones. now the station 4 wants to send a packet as well so after difs waiting time three stations try to get access now the two stations accidentally have the same back of time now look at station 4 and station 5 are having the same back of time so what happens this content and this content will be going away it is going to be elapsed okay so this is also in collision so certain problems a collision is coming over here isn't it so here some problems are. so what is the uh, flaw over here look at there is no mechanism there is no telling or uh, uh, telling of mechanism i am receiving the medium is free there is no communication between the stations so that is a flaw over here so what i will do we have to communicate with the mediums such that flaw or collisions has been uh, is been fully relieved so what to do they went for another mechanism which is going to tell you which is going to tell the medium or which is going to tell the sender or the receiver okay some response has been given in order to prevent such 
collisions so that is that is given by uh, two commands one is request to send and clear to send okay so here what is coming over here is uh, if a station wants to send a packet first it will wait for some time that is a difs time okay it will wait for some time and it will send a small command to the receiver shall i send a request to send command will be sent to the receiver the receiver will be waiting for some short duration so for waiting for a short duration what is the frame space it is sifs it will wait for some short space and still if the medium is free it will send a message called as a clear to send okay meaning that i am ready to receive the data you can send okay then after waiting for some sifs a short frame space uh the data will be the sender will start sending the data okay and after a short after receiving all the data and then checking over the channels free or not after waiting for some uh, short frame space that is sifs the receiver will then go, go through a acknowledgement that the data has been received uh, successfully so meanwhile what are the other stations doing they are just listening to the conversation they are not sending the message they are just looking over the medium is free or not in order to access the channel okay so here by by introduction of these concepts that rts and cts i am just going to solve away the collisions this is your third, second method second mechanism and the extension of your second mechanisms instead of rather sending me the whole data i could just fragment it okay i'm just you going to utilize the same concept what i'm going to do i'm just going to send my data in forms of fragments now look at so the first thing i'm sending a first fragment of data then again a uh, second fragment of data and the th third fragment of data that's it this is what is fragmentation and a third method uh, the previous two access methods uh, does not guarantee a maximum access delay or minimum transmission bandwidth so to provide a time bound and service the standard specifies a point coordination function on top of the standard dcf mechanisms okay so this is what it is about polling method okay so using the pcf it requires an access point that controls the medium access and pulls the signal nodes up ad hoc networks cannot use this function i have already stated this ad hoc nodes will not use this function okay now here comes uh, what actually is done is uh, here we have it is of course a wireless station many stations are over there you have a point coordinator so what is the meaning of this point coordinator it is going to initiate okay so the point coordinate and the access point splits the access time into super frame periods a super frame comprises a contention frame period and a contention period a contention period can be used for the two access mechanisms presented above okay so at time t not look here at time t not the contention free period the contention free period of the super frame should theoretically stop but another station is still transmitting data this means that pcf also refers to dcf and the start of the upper frame may be postponed okay so they will have to wait if another station is using at the same time you have to wait okay then uh, next uh, the only possibility of avoiding variations is not to have any contention period at all after the medium has been idle until d1 the point coordinate has to wait for pifs now look at this idle is just sensing whether the medium is free or not if it is ideal if it is idle at time t not it will again extend for certain time okay that is what is pifs time okay so it is waiting for some pifs time to access the medium as the pif is smaller than dfs no other station can start sending earlier the point coordinate now sends the data d1 downstream to the wireless to the first wireless station the station can answer at once after a a uh, giving a short frame space okay then after waiting the point coordinate can pull the second station by sending d2 okay so first station it is pulled uh, it, the wireless station has received it right then after waiting for certain time it will pull for the second station okay for after waiting for sifs uh, short frame space the second user will access the data okay then next uh, the chain goes on then the point coordinate after waiting for some time the point coordinator will uh, pull the third response to the third reason third uh, user okay then after waiting for some time the fourth uh, data will be sent like this way it is a point coordinator who is going to organize the uh, organize or it is going to check whether the channel is free or not and it is the one who is going to give the data to each and every users present over the network over the wireless network so this is what is your polling function method so the three methods are over let us discuss discuss about the mac frames okay so the figure shows you the mac frames uh, first is a frame control which is of two bits 
and your frame control has been further subdivided into many fields. So the first field is your protocol version type, subtype, to destination, from destination, more fragmentation, retry, power management, more uh, data and your security purposes in the order. Okay, so coming over here, your next, your adjacent frame for your frame control is duration ID. So duration ID, it is going to tell you the period of time in which the medium is being occupied. So for how long your medium has been accessed. So that how long the period of accessing the uh, medium is stated over here in this field. Then there are four addresses over here, address 1, address 2, address 3, address 4. It is going to give you the IEEE 802.11's MAC address. And you have a sequence control. Uh, sequence control due to acknowledgement mechanism frames it might be duplicated thereby here a filter is present over here to filter out all the duplicate forms and data of course this is our original data which has to be sent then next is your CRC your CRC is nothing but it is used to protect it is a checksum which is used to protect the frame and the protocol and here comes your inner versions or your subfields of your frame control your protocol version is right uh, protocol version, it is a 2-bit field that indicates the current protocol version and is always fixed by 0. In type, it is going to determine the function of the frame. If 0, 0, it is going to indicate management. If 0, 1, it is going to indicate control. 1, 0, it is going to in indicate data. And the value is 1, it is going to tell you it is a reserved type. Then, subtype, uh, there are many management frames. If in the subtype 0, 0 is there, 0, 0, 0 is there, it is going to tell you association request. If the value is 1000, it is going to tell you it is a backend signal. And more fragments, see this field, if this field is set to 1, uh, it is going to tell you it is the current uh, uh, data, it is having another fragment also. The data is not over, you have many more fragments to be sent. And retry, uh, if this bit is set to 1, it is telling you that the current frame which is sending is the transmission of an earlier frame. That is, something might be lost. So that last frame has been retransmitted. So if this bit, if this bit is set to one, it is indicating that the frame which is coming now is a retransmitted frame. Power management, uh, if this field is set to one, it tells you that the station is going in a power save mode. If the if this field is set to zero, it is telling you that station is active. And more data, if this field is set, it is used to indicate the receiver that the sender has more number of data to be sent. It is not the end, many more of data is uh, waiting. You have to wait until you receive all the data. Then wired equivalent privacy, it is going to give you the security mechanisms. So that's all for the lectures today. Uh, the remaining part will be discussed in my next, le next lectures. Thank you.